afternoon. So first and foremost, massive thanks to uh, Griff um, for the um, leading on to this next part of the presentation. Um, first, what I'm going to do is give you a little bit of background about me and how I landed in this wonderful industry. Um, talk about how we at SG Digital are thinking about um, innovation, building on some of the great themes that have already been out in the presentations today, and then talking about not Amazon Casino, uh, but what we're doing um, as SG Digital and Game Tech. Game tech to really drive next level player um, engagement. Now, this could be a seamless introduction to the uh, presentation from Henrik um, earlier today. So, I started my career in a company called Dunhumby. Hands up in the audience if anybody's heard of Dunhumby. Brilliant. Now, when Henrik was talking about pet care, these are the guys that in UK and Europe will be leading the charge on helping the pet care industry to grow. Most of you still look in blank faces as to, as to why. So let's take the UK as a prime example. In the UK, these guys have 18 million records of customers that have purchased inside a small retailer called Tesco. And every single day, what they're using that data for with customer science techniques and AI is to try and improve the experiences both in a retail environment, so in a grocery store, and also digitally online. And last night, I was talking to somebody over lunch, uh, sorry, over dinner, um, who runs a tier one operator, and they were talking about four segments that they had in terms of what they're using, in terms of how they're doing CRM campaigns. Dunhumby use 18 million, so a one-to-one -one segment for every single customer that they have data for. So, and at that business, I ran the innovation and product team for about like five years. So data, customer science, improving the experience of customers, or in our industry, ex improving the experience of players is something that's very, very dear to my heart. And I started in this industry two years ago, so I am a newbie still. I have my birthday on the 1st of October, um, and I can honestly say with hand on heart, this is the most compelling and engaging industry that is around in the world today. And thank you for those people that I've met on that journey, um, and thank you for those that I'll meet um, hopefully on my journey to stay in this industry and to learn more each day about the brilliant industry that we're operating in today. When at SG we talk about um, innovation, it really centers on this philosophy of a two-sided network and the effect that that two-sided network has um, on both sides. So let's use the example of um, Amazon here. Amazon.com on the right-hand side, or the left-hand side, depending on what you're looking at, right-hand side, um, has sellers, so people that want to sell products. And on the opposite side, they have people that want to buy those products. Okay, really simple kind of like philosophy. And as more people buy and use the platform, more people want to sell. Simple economic sort of like factors come into, come into bear. And we've heard today many examples of platform industries or platform companies that are changing industries today. So whether that's Instagram, whether that's eBay, whether that's Uber, most people probably think Uber is a closed platform, but they sit in the middle of an ecosystem. They have people on the left-hand side that want to move around countries and cities in a better way than they could before. And they have people on the right-hand side that want to offer their cars to take those people around. So what have they done? They've created a dynamic new industry, you know, based on lots and lots of different kind of like factors. And they're the guys that sit in the middle. They're the platform owner. They actually don't employ drivers, right? Sometimes a driver, if you ever speak to somebody from an Uber or Lyft, ask them if they've ever met anybody from the company, right? Most of it is done via email, via chat, um, via message services. Most Uber drivers have never met the company that gives them their wages. Now, imagine that, sort of like five, 10 years ago, right? An amazing kind of like paradigm shift in an industry that was very stale, very old, um, and very kind of like, I guess, on um, 2018, 2019, 2020. Um, and if you want to read more about this, I suggest, um, and to, the, to Henrik and the NetEnt guys who are about to launch Connect, get a copy of this book. 
Okay, go online, download it. It's called Platform Revolution. It's been out for six, seven years. Some of the data points, quite old. I'm hoping that they're going to launch a new version with some updated data points, okay? But an amazing book that talks about how platforms have changed the way that we operate today alongside all the macro economic um, and macro factors that have really influenced the way that we consume services today as, um, as individuals. Um, and inside this book, it talks about something that is really, really dear to my heart within the R gaming industry. And it's one line or two words, and it talks about serving communities. And if you think about that in our own world today, my community as a B2B platform provider um, is on both sides of the network. Okay? I'm trying to have a community of partners that help me to build great player experiences. I'm trying to have a community of operators that connect into my content aggregation platform. You as operators have communities um, of players that you're trying to engage with um, in different ways and create different and better, more engaging experiences. A little bit about SD Digital. So, Huge amount of scale now that runs through um, our platform. So when we're thinking about both sides of that network, for us, um, it really starts with thinking about you know, how many partners have we got, how many games um, are live. You know, we're doing something like 2 billion transactions um, a month. Data points okay, on what players are doing, how players are playing games. We've seen a huge amount, as everybody has, you know, of, of mobile growth. You know, over the last 18 months, 24 months. We've seen our partners increase. Um, we've seen our transactions increase. And we're managing you know, a technical infrastructure that's trying to cope with something like 100,000 peak bets um, a minute. And is there room for innovation in there? Well, absolutely. Every single day, there's room to improve and to do things better, whether that's product, process, or just understanding more about the industry that we're in today and what players are thinking um, and feeling. And when we look outside of this amazing environment that we're in today, and we've heard speakers talk about the choppy waters um, that are around in um, our gaming today, a lot of industries, a lot of different verticals are going through different challenges. We're no, we're no different, we have our own challenges that we're trying to understand and to address and to develop new products or new services or new ways of working to really, I guess, navigate through what is a, you know, a, a choppy time within this industry at the moment. And to avoid any contractual conversations at the bar later, um, I've taken off the names of operators and partners that these share prices um, were taken about sort of like a week ago. Um, we can see from data points within the industry okay, that there is some challenges that we as suppliers, you as operators, as our partners um, are facing within the industry. We've heard lots about regulation today within sort of like Sweden and other markets. It's challenging times out there. And if there's a call to action from this presentation, now's the time for innovation. Okay? Now is definitely the time to look at everything that we've done in the past that's built this brilliant industry that we all love and that's dear to our hearts and my hearts, and how we ultimately go on potentially a different journey. But we learn from history, okay? But we plot the future by the actions that we collectively um, take. And this list is endless in terms of the challenges that we're seeing within the industry at the moment. And if you take something as simple or as complex as the recent Apple iOS announcement. And it actually astounded me, this, like the reaction within the industry, both from big regulatory bodies to operators of all shapes and size. When they said these words, it's unfair what Apple are doing to us. Imagine that. People saying, that it's unfair what Apple are doing to us. And then you ask the question that starts with something as simple as, when was the last time you spoke to Apple? Hands up. Outside of the reviewer and developer process that we all go through, 
to put our apps out. When was the last time we'd have a dialogue about what it is that we were doing as an industry with Apple, where take a number between 20 and 50%, depending on who you are and where you are, in terms of mobile revenues that's going through that platform today? Hands up. Hands up post the announcement. How many people have had or at least tried to have a direct conversation with Apple? Well, that's quite a few. My suggestion is maybe more of you might want to have that conversation. OK, because okay, they're, a, they're, a, they're not a regulated part of our industry, okay, but they're a fundamental part of how players today experience my products and your products. And that kind of like notion that it was unfair in terms of what it is that they were doing um, was really kind of like alien to lots of us within in industry. Yet when we mobilize, we innovate. And when we mobilize, we do things in a better way that we're hoping will provide a better experience for our, um, for our players. And lots of quotes that we can use, I guess, to talk about innovation. Most from the slides before around, you know, quotes from Zuckerberg in Facebook or Instagram about what it is that we're doing. But this one really resonates with us at SGD and what it is we're trying to do. Um, and there's some key words that kind of like pop out to me when I, when I read this quote and we talk about this um, internally. And ultimately, the one word that stands out around here is around failure, okay? It is fine to fail when we talk about innovation, and it's fine to talk about it. I'm gonna show you some stuff that we're doing with game tech. And the first iterations were about a five out of 10, okay? It's fine to fail, because if we fail and learn, then we will move on. And I can guarantee that everybody that's tried to innovate in this room, or is innovating in this room today, has failed. And it's not the failure that matters, it's whether you learn from it and move on. And can from that failure you find you know, two or three things out of the 10 or 12 things that you're trying to do to build on and go again. And I think as, as an industry, because of the growth that we've been under, um, the huge growth that's happened in this industry over the last sort of like four or five years, that we've been slightly reticent, slightly scared to do things differently because the growth's been there. But when growth is harder to come, innovation becomes more prevalent, innovation becomes more needy within the business, um, but you have to be able to take failure on the chin. And as long as we learn, and I think the industry as a whole will move forward, as we've heard lots today. And game tech, as you've heard Griff talk about, give an amazing platform that allows us to curate and create better player experiences on than we could do if we built it ourselves. And we had this come to Jesus moment where our dev teams had gone off uh, working with our product teams to conceptualize and build the back-end engine that would ultimately power the way that we engage with players. And we were that close to pressing the button to go and go it alone. Okay, so get in a darkened room probably for 18 months, spin up millions of dollars um, of investment to try and essentially using a terminology from before, copy what was already there. Okay, because the added value is about what you create on top, not necessarily the platform service that sits behind it. If that's brilliant and better, and allows you to create more services on top, then happy days. And that's where we wanted to spend our time, was on the creation of the services that sit on top of that platform, not on the platform itself. So we went out and we looked at a number of different um, partners. And we landed on GameSpot, that were then bought by Amazon. And the journey that that business has been on um, is phenomenal to see from the inside out. One of the most vertically and horizontally scalable platforms you will find within this industry. Why? Because it's already tried and tested in social gaming and in gaming from a, you know, from a Xbox, PlayStation um, point of view. And where we wanted to focus, because of history, because of the acquisitions and mergers that we've been on, was around three areas. One was around reliability, first and foremost. Okay, we heard from you guys that 
we needed to probably take a bit of a look at ourselves and do things differently, okay? Learn from the failures that had happened in the past. We then want to look at how we created entertainment, okay? Because we've heard previously, we are in the entertainment business, okay? Land-based space in the US is becoming, you know, increasingly under, under pressure um, as part of the retail entertainment kind of like experience of, of casinos. We are fighting for screen time of my generation, Generation X's, Generation Z's, Generation 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 that's going to come after, okay? Because our players today, you know, are consuming services in a very, very different way. And then we wanted to get into the real sweet spot of our kind of like engagement and partnership was around how do we connect um, opportunities? How do we see from the two billion rounds of data that we're collecting on a second by second, week by week, day to day basis? What is that data telling us that we can help engender better products from a responsible gaming point of view, and or in this context, um, better player experiences from a player engagement point of view that give you the tools out of the box to really be able to sort of like create um, a better narrative with your, with your players, both today and tomorrow. And we came up with what we're talking about now internally is sort of like the three C's when we go back to how we're trying to build better player engagement services. And these are not new, but these are things that really kind of like, I guess, really embeds what we're trying to do with game tech, um, with the, sort of like the gaming industry. And it's about compensating, so rewarding players for doing things. Yeah, free rounds for a long time has been the, you know, the bastion of this industry. Is it used in the right way? Is it used to really drive kind of like value? Is it used to retain? Is it used to acquire? All those things are true. But can we find better ways to sort of like compensate players that may be coming from you know, different circles of life and different kind of like industries? How can we really kind of like encourage people to compete against each other? You know, when you look at things like Fortnite that we've heard lots about, you know, that is players or peers competing against each other. That doesn't really exist in the RMG casino world today. It exists a little bit, a bit land-based. If you sit on a bunch of slot machines and you see people trying to kind of like win, but it doesn't really exist in kind of the RMG world. Um, and really then around, you know, how do we help people and see things through the data that allow them to do things, you know, more often in the right responsible way. And missions and tournaments are not new within the industry. Missions and tournaments at scale within this industry that aren't bound to one set of games is new. So today, if we, if we look outbound into the competitive set, into the, oper into the partners that are providing these services today, you know, it's quite hard for you as an operator to have all your content being available to be used for a missions or a tournament. You can do it in selected parts, but can you do it across the whole piece? When we think about jackpots and we look at the growth of Red Tiger, you know what, maybe it's time for some tiger taming new jackpots, okay, to come out in a very, very different way that really start to, again, use the cues that we're seeing within the social um, gaming sphere. And we know that all these things on the right-hand side, left-hand side as you're looking at it, are true, okay? This, single studio focus, when we think about open innovation, and if you think back to that kind of like network effect, then I'm not in the business of just building these missions and tournaments just for my proprietary content. I'm a content aggregator. It just happens to build content as well, very successfully. But we're also very successful at aggregating. Okay, so I want to have open innovation where whatever content is being distributed via my platform is treated in exactly the same way. Why? Because your players don't care what platform it comes from. They care about the experience that they get. And if I at the box can give you 200 games, 300 games, 400 games, 500 games that we can treat in exactly the same way, that's infinitely better than what exists in the industry today. And the power of game tech and game sparks gives us the ability to do that. And we can spend our time on the you know, curation of amazing UX um, and UI. And hands up, 
I have borrowed this from social. It is copied from social. It is proprietary in the essence of we've designed it. Okay, but we've gone out and looked at where these things today are really, really resonating with, with players across the, um, across the world. Save for tournaments. Exactly the same kind of like process that we're going through, where today we know that single games and some partners are further on the journey and can do multiple games. But who today has a, has a bunch of 200, 300 games as an operator where they can run tournaments? Where all the badges that are needed are pre-canned, all the metadata is, throwing, is flowing through a secure, Kafka-driven service into a backend that I don't see, but you see as an operator. And out the box, there's 200 games. And then next month, there's another 10 launches that automatically are populated into that kind of like system so that you can look at the data and create better experiences for your, for your players. And again, where we've wanted to spend our time is on making sure that the experience that players see is unique to our platform, but has the breadth and depth of a scale that our two-sided network and the network effect that we've created and that you've helped us to create really kind of like makes, um, makes a difference. And last but not least, I'm not going to give too much away. Um, we did a presentation um, a few weeks ago around innovation in the jackpot space. And for me, the game is the end result of a partnership with Game Tech that allows even these things to be true. Okay? And even if this concept doesn't work, the fact that this industry now has the ability to run a curated jackpot where you can play against your friends, where you can set up a peer-to-peer -peer tournament, where you can share that liquidity, where you can create your own avatar to fight in a jackpot, whether that's you on your own, whether that's you with a group or friends, or whether that's casino grounds versus whoever you want to pick, Good. Um, the technology is there because of the partnership that's been, been created. And this is what GameSparks and GameTech allow us to do. It's that pure notion of one single integration, takes a bit of time, that allows a bunch of services to be architected to curate better experiences um, for players. So look, thanks very much for your time. Um, more than happy to, ask, to answer any questions um, in, the, in the hall or tonight over drinks. Um, and I think we've talked about this a lot today. The final C that isn't on the three Cs is around collaboration, okay? It absolutely is the best industry that I've come across. And I want us to win together, collaborate more, and take this industry into the stratosphere in terms of where it can go and where we all believe and want it to go. So thank you very much, guys.